you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the com, The big show, folks. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, today, we have an amazing multi book author on the show, Mark. Graney is on the show with us today. He's going to be talking about his newest uh, A Gray Man series novel and some of the other works that he's up to as well. well. We'll talk to him about a lot of different stuff. We just won't talk about the book. We're going to talk to him as a human being and say, Mark, what the hell's going on with you, man? And uh, he's probably going to tell us what the hell's going on with him. I don't know what any of that means, but it's going to be an interesting conversation. In the meantime, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Remember, the Chris Voss Show is a giant multi-level marketing company, and uh, you must have five people in your downline. No, don't do that. We're just kidding. We're not one of those companies. But it would be nice. You know, wouldn't it be nice if you just... If, if you felt like you had a community, like all your friends really understood you because they all listen to the Chris Voss show, I don't know why I'm guilting and shaming this way, but it's awful. Don't do it again, Chris. Anyway, guys, go to YouTube.com for this Chris Voss. Goodreads.com for this Chris Voss. LinkedIn.com for this Chris Voss. And those are the plugs, my ladies and gentlemen, friends. Uh, he is the author of the newest book. Comes out February 21st, 2023. The uh, title of it is Burner, and it's part of the Gray Man novel series uh this is book 12 of 12 uh, a gray man novel series by mark graney uh, mark am i getting your last name correct i want to make sure i get that right yeah you're nailing it i never notice when people mispronounce it but it is grainy yeah okay sounds good then and uh so mark is a wonderful gentleman we've uh, heard about him before he has a degree in international relations and political science in his research for the gray man novels includes uh, sierra six relentless one minute out mission critical agent in place gun mental gray back blast dead eye i think i had the black blast after some talk about the other night uh dead eye ballistic uh, on target and the gray man he traveled to more than 35 countries this is why people should write books because you get an excuse to travel uh you're doing research quote unquote uh and he trained alongside military and law enforcement in the use of firearms battlefield medicine and close range combative tactics well uh marine lieutenant colonel rip rawlings uh he or with marine Lieutenant Colonel Rip Rawlings. He wrote the New York Times bestseller Red Metal. Uh, he's also the author of the New York Times bestsellers Tom Clancy, uh, Support and Defend, Tom Clancy, Full Force and Effect, Tom Clancy, Commander-in-Chief, and Tom Clancy, True Faith and Allegiance with Tom Clancy. He co-authored Locked In, Threat Vector, and Command Authority. Welcome to the show, Mark. How are you? I'm doing good, Chris. No one's ever read all my books before. You know, like read out all my books. Before. Uh, you know, I I always I read the bio. <laughs> I always read the bio, and I'm like, oh wow, okay, we're just we're just doing the whole library here. Uh, <laughs> so, welcome to the show, Mark. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. <laughs> Give us your dot com so people can find more about you on the interwebs or wherever you want people to get to know you better. It's my name, Mark Graney, G R E A N E Y Books dot com, and that's my website. I'll give you all my info. There you go. So this is book 12 of 12 of your A Gray Man novel series. Uh, what motivates you want to write this book? Well, let's see. Um, this book, like you said, it's the 12th. Um, all my novels are standalone. You don't have to read the, you know, the previous ones to know what's going on. And this book sort of centers around the, uh, the war in, in Ukraine, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Although it's not a military novel, it's definitely an espionage novel, and not one page of it takes place in Ukraine. It, it takes place uh, in Western Europe and in the U.S. and in the Caribbean, actually. But it involves Russian money laundering and um, and that sort of thing. And it was just, uh, you know, I was a passionate reader and, and kind of follower of the news. And as the war kicked off last year, I was writing, I was already starting a book about uh, Russian money laundering in Switzerland and I, I took it to uh, to the next level, uh, you know, by incorporating real things that were happening in the world. So I was I was very inspired by honestly my emotions, uh, the, the outrage about 
about what Russia is doing. So that's what kind of spurred me on to, to tell this story. There you go. And I think the Gray Man series is now been picked up by, uh, this is a little bit old news, I think from last year, but, but picked up by Netflix. Yeah, the, the, the first uh, book in the series, which is called The Gray Man, came out last July on Netflix, um, starring Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans and Billy Bob Thornton and Anna de Armas. And uh, it did really well. And they are doing a sequel to it. They're writing the script for the sequel. So there'll, there'll be another movie out in a couple of years, I guess. Awesome sauce. I got to check that out. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton. I mean, there's a, a gr other great actors you mentioned there, but Billy Bob Thornton, I, I usually love just about anything he's in. He's, yeah, he's, ama he's amazing. His acting skill between Bad Santa and then uh, Sling Blade. Yeah. You want fries with that? You want the mustard? Um, I mean, I just, it's, it's some of the roles that he, he's one of those actors that can just they change in you. So I'll, I'll check. Absolutely. It. There was a great thing you did on Amazon. I don't remember what the series was, but it was set in LA. It was great. So uh, tell us, uh, give us a 30 foot overview of this particular book and the plot or, or, you know, what you can tease out on the plot. Yeah. So there's, there's uh, my hero is a guy named Court Gentry, who's a former CIA paramilitary op officer. Mm -hmm. And then he's throughout the series through the 12 books of the series. Uh, you know, he's, his position has changed many times, but now he's working kind of on a contract basis with the agency and a trove of files have been stolen from a bank in Switzerland that detail how Russia is um, paying off bribes to influential people in the West and mm -hmm. also how they're uh, conducting their operations you know, financially, how they're funding operations in the West. And this uh, information is all out loose in the world and they court my hero is being sent after this information to get it back to the CIA to uh, figure out what's going on and to kind of expose Russia. Meanwhile, Court's uh, lover, who he hasn't seen in over a year, a couple books back, her name is Zoya Zakharova. She's a former Russian foreign intelligence officer who is now working on the other side of this operation. She's trying to protect this banker that has stolen these files. So mm. Court and Zoya start out the book anyway on opposite ends of the spectrum. And uh, there's a there's a potential for a peace treaty to be signed that will it's very cynical and it'll protect Russia government and mafia interests at the expense of Ukraine territory and lives. And uh, the gray man is trying to desperately stop this from happening by any means necessary. There you go. And so uh, is this a standalone novel? I mean, is this, is this a novel where if you haven't read the other prior 11 books, it, you can, it can stand alone and you, you can get it? Absolutely. That's that's really important to me because I'm a reader myself mm. and, and I just would never want to tell somebody I'm going to need you to pick up 11 other books and then <laughs> then you'll enjoy this one. So you, you pick up book 12 and it definitely orients you with who's who and what's what. And uh, and it, all that matters is what happens in the 520 pages of this book. What do you think is the thing that draws people to, uh, you know, mystery novels, thriller and suspense and, and then to the characters and, and stories and plot lines you write about? In a general sense, um, I think people like the escapism. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, as, as a reader, I like a combination between like uh, escapism, but also things that are rooted in reality and um, current affairs and politics. Like I, I became obsessed with Tom Clancy when I was younger, and it was because I studied a lot of these things uh, as a political science major. But I get to read them in fiction, and it's just a lot more fun, a lot more interesting than reading some sort of think tank policy paper or whatever. And so I think in general, that's why people like these sort of espionage books specific mm -hmm. to my books. I, I think the draw really is that my hero, Court Gentry, is not um, just a macho man Rambo type. He's, he's a, he has a lot of vulnerabilities. He has a lot of skills and, and abilities. Mm -hmm. He also has uh, quite a few vulnerabilities. And um, I think that that makes makes him feel real and somebody you can root for there you go so tom clancy's books were an inspiration then you end up writing some of them yeah yeah it's very fascinating the first first thriller i ever bought in my life was patriot games which was his ah. third, third novel came out in 87 and i was like 19 years old or something like that and uh <laughs> and you know it was another 23 years before i became a published author another 25 it was 25 years before i started working with tom um, but yeah, it was very surreal to, to start working with him. That must have been really interesting and really exciting. And, and I mean, you, you kind of your hero, if you will. 
Yeah, it was scary. I mean, it was <laughs> the, 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 my first thoughts were like, oh my God, how, why are they asking me this? You know, how do I get out of this? Um, but I knew that, you know, I knew all the characters. I'd read every Clancy book, several of them multiple times. And uh, I, I think I was the right person for the job. My editor, Tom Colgan, uh, who, who approached me for it, uh, I think he saw something in me that I didn't quite see yet. And he knew that I, you know, would, would uh, at least work really hard. And so I did write three books with Tom while he was alive. And then after he passed away, his family asked me to continue the Jack Ryan series. So I ended up doing wow. seven in six years. That's really awesome. And the Jack Ryan series is uh, an ongoing movie uh, franchise, isn't it? Yeah, movie, uh, TV series. It's uh, it's um, it's out there. He's, he's sort of America's James Bond. So it was, it was really cool to, uh, to get to work in that world. Yeah, if people, you know, with, I mean, the James Bond series and different things like that, the Ryan series, you know, people really eat this stuff up. They love it. And of course, it's for good measure. I mean, it's it's good escapism. Yeah. Uh, maybe we all want to be secret uh, CIA or, or whatever spies. I mean, maybe that's our. Yeah. That's our yeah. Point. And there's honestly like wish fulfillment in it. You know, the bad guys get what's coming to them and all that sort of stuff. Although in, in my novels, sometimes my my endings are not. 100% satisfactory. They're a little more realistic. There's a, oh. there's th good things happen, bad things happen. Um, uh, I just, I kind of like that murky gray area uh, a little bit better than the, the, the white hat guys winning and the black hat guys <laughs> losing. Yeah. It was, it, you know, there, I mean, there's sometimes when you do watch a movie and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always end with good, good beats evil. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, it, it's an interesting sort of twist. Like the Bond, you know, the ending of the most recent Bond movie. I mean, normally mm -hmm. we didn't see Bonds, you know, get retired. They just kind of disappeared and you kind of... Yeah. Went, you know, yeah. Um, and I kind of like that. I didn't like, I didn't like how this one ended. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess we'll see what they do with it. But it, it yeah. did show, like you mentioned, uh, that you do with your character is a fallacy you know, the humanness to them. They, they certainly built in a lot more uh, yeah. humanity into him, a daughter and the doll right. he dies with at the end or what is it, teddy bear or whatever. Yeah. Um, you have you have another book series that you do, the Joshua Duffy book series? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one in that series, well, I didn't know it was a series when I wrote the first one. <laughs> just like with the Gray Man, I didn't know it was a series. I was just trying to be published. Um, and here we are a mm -hmm. dozen books later. But the, the first armor, the first book in the Josh Duffy series came out last summer and it was called Armored. And it's been optioned for film, uh, just like Gray Man has. Um, we'll see what happens. But um, I'm, I'm writing the second book this year, which will come out next year. So I don't know how big that series is going to be, if it's going to end up being as, as big and long as the Gray Man series. But it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it's about a, a private military contractor. Um, the first book, uh, he's kind of on a, a suicide run in Mexico in a team of only 20 guys trying to protect some dignitaries through cartel country. Oh, wow. And they're sort of uh, turned on and there's a lot of internal threats and external threats. And it's a wild you know, action adventure. So I'm going to do the sequel to that one this year, which will hopefully come out next summer. There you go. There you go. Uh, so going back to your Gray Man novel series, why, why did you choose the... Uh the the quote unquote gray man as the as the term you wanted to use for your guy it's a term that so i at the time and i guess still i i do a lot of uh training with firearms and i was going out to this school in middle tennessee where they were training this was you know in the days of iraq war and all that they were training a lot of civilian contractors civ civilian military contractors and you, you would hear them talk about be the gray man which means basically move under the radar if you're traveling around you know don't wear the gear and the uh the, the sunglasses and the watches that show you how uh, to be uh, to be a guy so a gray man is just somebody that can kind of move through the atmosphere i was already working on the idea for the story when i started hearing this term and i thought well that's a that's a cool name for my uh for my protagonist or a, a cool sort of nickname for my protagonist and is he based with the cia or is he on his own how does how does his how does he operate so the, when the first book starts, he's a former CIA officer, but the CIA is trying to kill him and he doesn't know why. He's mm -hmm. still an American patriot. He feels like he did everything right. He hadn't done anything wrong. He doesn't get it. But he's working in the private sector. He's basically a freelance assassin um, living off grid. 
but he only takes jobs that he feels are righteous or good for America or, or you know, just for the common good. And, uh, and then as the, as we've gotten a dozen books into the series, his relationship with the CIA is kind of returned and is kind of faltered here and there as different people. I have a lot of, um, you know, gray characters in the series, someone mm-hmm. in the CIA who's not exactly what they seem or someone in a foreign intelligence service who's not as bad as you might first think or whatever. So I, characterization is like really important to me. So he's at this point in book 12, he's not with the CIA, but he is has been found by the CIA and they've asked him to go do this job that only he can do. Nice. I love that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's intriguing how much we love these stories. I mean, you could, you could make a billion bond movies. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And as long as, a, as long as it's a masculine role, it got a little too feminine on, on the last one, but, uh, you know, I think that's appealing. What, what, what is your audience? Uh, is it mostly men, uh, women, uh, you know, they told me a few years ago kind of how the demographic graphics laid out. And I think it was uh, 60 something percent male and there you go. Uh, 40 or so percent female. And uh, it, it's growing in the female sector, which I'm, I'm really happy about. But um, yeah, I, you know, I have so little effect that I can do on that sort of stuff. It's just more like I'm curious. And they told me, uh, yeah. my, my publisher, it's like, I just try to write a book that I would love to read. And I'm a male, um, but yeah. at the same, but at the same time, you know, I think my characters are, are even my female characters. I've uh, Zoya Zakharova, who's like one of my main female characters, uh, is is a very strongly written female. Suzanne Brewer, who's one of the villains in the series, a CIA officer, is a is a character that I've spent a lot of time trying to get you know the beats right for. So, um, you know, I want it to be inclusive. Anybody that wants to read these guys type of books. There you go. It's it's good to have uh, the full mixture there, uh, because women do read a lot of books. We have a lot of uh, those beach. What are those the beach novels? They call them beach novels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of novelists on the on the show that write write books, and they're kind of meant to you read you read them while you're at the beach with the kids and stuff. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it's a it's a huge audience. Yeah. Um. So, uh, do you see uh, more books coming in the future for the Green Man novels? Yeah, series? I'm I'm working on book thirteen right now. It'll be wow. out this this time next year, and I know there'll be one. I know there'll be one after that, at least. Um, I'm kind of reaching the age where I'm going. Are there more books behind me than there are ahead of me? I have no idea, <laughs> but um, you know, I I'm in a pretty happy place with the series. I like I like writing the series. I also like writing different things. So. It's uh, it really. I think it makes the books better when you step mm-hmm. away for a little bit, work on something else, and then step back into it fresh. And um, that's kind of my modus operandi at this point in my career. I, and we've had a lot of multi-book authors on that have those branches like you have now, where they have multi-different projects or characters they can work on. And being able to flip around, they say the same thing. It helps them, kind of keeps things fresh. Yeah, for sure. I I, I like it. I'm always thinking about whenever I'm writing a book, I'm always thinking about the next book kind of like, Oh, I can't wait to write that one. Um, you know, when you're in the grind of the one that you're working on and you're sort of fantasizing about the next one, that's going to be so easy and it's all going to come together so easily. But, uh, the reality is, is they're all kind of a hard slog, but it's the way to do it. You know, we talked in your bio about how you traveled to 35 countries and trained alongside uh, military and law enforcement. Uh, how is that for fun? That's, that's gotta be great to, you know, do the research and, and do this in depth. Yeah, it's it it's a lot of fun and interesting. I, I do it as much as I can. You know, if you have six months to write a book, there's a little window in there where I can go do some location research. I will do it uh, for Burner, this new book. I went to the Caribbean, to the island of Saint Lucia, and I went to um, Switzerland and to Italy, and spent some time in New York City, which is one of the locations in the novel. And um, I've gotten to do that, but I've been to Russia and China and Algeria and you know. Sweden and uh, Latin America, Guatemala, that sort of thing. Um, it, working on different books, Mexico, and mm-hmm. uh, almost always great experiences. And when they're not great experiences, they make for great stories. So there you go. There you go. And I think Guatemala was an area that you uh, stumbled upon uh, starting your New York Times bestselling series, right? Yeah, I was actually in Guatemala when I got the idea for the the Gray Man story. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I ran into a, a guy in a bar. I, 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 I was living in Guatemala studying Spanish, but I was down in El Salvador for the weekend. And um, I was just at a little bar and there was an American guy in there who didn't look like anybody else and was kind of off to himself. And 
client. And I just sort of made up this backstory that he was this CIA officer living uh-huh. off the grid, grid because the agency was trying to kill him. And I never talked to the guy. I just sat there and drank a beer and thought about him. And the next day I was like, I'll write a book. That's great. I wonder if that guy knows he was the inspiration for the. I doubt he does. Uh, I doubt he does. I've had people. I've had people send me messages saying that because I've told this story publicly, and they'd be like, "Hey, I was that guy in Guatemala. I mean, in El Salvador." And uh, you know, they basically just recite things that I've said in interviews, and uh, and they're like, "Do you remember me?" And I just roll my eyes. <laughs> we all know it was me uh, in Guatemala. There you go. Uh, so there, there's some uh, kind of some interesting story about your love of Tom Clancy novels and your father, and kind of uh, how you got interested in in the shorter genre. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So my dad, well, my dad was an interesting guy. He was the head of the NBC station here in Memphis, where I live. And mm-hmm. so I grew up around the news 100%. He, he fought in World War II and then came home and started working, as, I think, as a cameraman at this new TV station in the 1940s. And, uh, and he was there up until his, almost before his death in 2005. He was there for over 50 years. They named wow. the newsroom after him. But he was a big reader as well. And we were both very interested in the news and in, in sort of history. So... I discovered, I guess, discovered Tom Clancy. I was the first one out of the two of us to to read one of his books. And I got my dad to read it. And then after that, we would sort of give each other, uh, for Christmas every year, the new Clancy book. I would give him one and he would give me one. And we did did that, you know, all through the 90s into the 2000s. And then then he got to see your success in writing your own books and then working with Tom Clancy? No, he didn't. Sadly, I finished my first novel, which wasn't even published. My fourth novel was the first one published. I finished it about two months after he died, so he never oh, wow. got to see any of that. And, and my mom passed away right before I got my book deal. Um, oh wow! So neither of them saw any of this, uh, sadly to say. But uh, you know, they were definitely inspirational in getting me here. There you go. Well, it's it's an interesting story in the in the in the life journey that you go through. I mean, uh, you know, reading Tom Clancy novels and then end up writing them. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a dream come true. Yeah, though. it's it's really crazy. And there you I, go. I, I still I look back at it because I uh, my last Clancy book was about six or seven years ago, and I'm and I go, how did I do that? Because those are big books, and I was writing other stuff at the same time, and it's like it it took a. a a level of focus that I don't know that I have anymore, but, but it, I'm glad, I'm glad that I got that opportunity. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Anything more we want to tease out on your newest book? On burner? Um, gosh, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be on tour. So I hope people will check my uh, website. Uh, I'll be on tour for that. Um, starting on the 20th in, mm-hmm. in Scottsdale, Arizona. And then I think I'm doing seven or eight dates uh, across the country and, I'd love for people to come out and see me. And, but yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's an exciting story with, you know, tons of action. Uh, that's what all the gray man books have, but there's also a lot of uh, sort of real life that's going on in here with the psychology, with the characters, with the political situation, the way it is, with the war that's going on, all these things are kind of integrated into the story. Definitely. Definitely. And we love good versus evil and, when usually when good, good triumphs that's always yeah that's always the thing well mark it's been wonderful to have you on the show thank you very much for coming on you you bet chris i enjoyed it there you go and uh, give us your dot coms uh, so people can find you on the interwebs please. yes it's mark there you go uh thanks to my honest for tuning in uh, go to goodreads.com for chess chris voss order up the book wherever fine books are sold remember stay out of those alleyway bookstores because they're dangerous <laughs> I don't know what that means. Burner uh, from the A Gray Man novel series by Mark Graney. Uh, February 21st, 2023. You can pre order it now so you can be the first one on your block to read it and get bragging rights. You read it first. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We certainly appreciate you guys and be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next.